Now we're going to look at the other kinds of assignments and we'll go as before we've turned editing on we're going under add an activity we'll go ahead and do an offline activity and offline activities are reserved essentially for things that they're going to turn in some other way or that they're not going to turn in at all so for example we could pick class presentation and this might be something that the student doesn't actually turn anything in but they're going to present in class and then you're going to grade them and what this does essentially is put a um, entry into the grade book and a place for you to give feedback and a place for them to see their scores. So uh, uh, final, evaluate, final evaluation for in-class team projects. See class notes for more info. Right? And then we might say, well, this is worth, uh, well, let's leave it at 100 points. And uh, availability in this case, since they're not actually doing the assignment here, uh, wouldn't make a lot of sense unless you wanted for them to see or not see. So again, I'm going to disable those. The late submissions button is kind of meaningless in that context. And uh, because all you're doing is adding, and it'll come down here. The other things we leave alone, uh, we can save and display. And the, it looks very much like the others. And um, Basically, when the student did their presentation in class, we would come and give it a grade. And notice here it says no attempts have been made on this, um, and there are no users in the class. So it's a little bit tricky to demonstrate this without <coughs> having some practical users, but once you have users, you'll be able to give any of them grades. And you could go s choose see all course grades. And as with all the uh, activities in Moodle, there's an update this such and such at the top right. So we'll go back to the main course page We're using our breadcrumb trail. And so there you see the class presentation assignment there. Now let's look at what that looks like from the student view. So we'll switch to student view and click on it. And that's all the student would really see, um, except that they have a grade if they've been giving it, given a grade. So that's very simple. Now we're going to go and add the other one. We'll return to the normal role because we were in the student view. Turn editing back on. And now we'll go and add the activity, well, this time an advanced uploading of files. And again, I said this in other videos, go look at the student workshop because it gives in detail the student perspective on how to do this. And there's no point in replicating it here. Um, but you should be comfortable with how it's going to look for a student. And one of the most confusing things about that is that even though they have an assignment and they have not submitted yet, it will actually say edit. And they wonder, well, why am I editing if I haven't done it? But that's just one of those quirks. So in this case, this is we could have multiple assignments. So let's say a show in, or uh, let's see, um, turn in first and second drafts. Say you had a writing class um, where you wanted them to do a rough cut and then a week later do a better one, and you wanted them to do them both and compare them side by side. So per class instructions, turn in your two rough drafts here. And so let's say we'll make that, uh, I don't know, 20 points. And I can have due dates again. I'll disable those in this case. And we could prevent late submissions if we had a due date. It doesn't matter in this case. Um, maximum size, I'll put a megabyte to be safe. That's a little bit large, and your school may have limited these. And we'll go down and look at the other options. There are quite a few more options here than with the other assignments. Do we allow deleting? Yes, no, okay, I'll leave that on. And if you have questions about these in particular, you can click on the context sensitive help and it pops up a window that looks like this. And it explains that if enabled, participants, in other words, students, may delete uploaded files at any time before submitting for grading. And I would say that's probably a good idea because they might have uploaded the wrong picture, for example, or the wrong file, and they're stuck if they hit the wrong button. So maximum number? Well, we only want two, so we're going to change that for this assignment. Do we want to allow them to take notes? For example, hey, professor, I had trouble with this or that. And I think that's always a good idea because maybe they want to tell you something about it. Um, if you don't, then you're stuck. They have to email you or send you a message. Do we want to hide the description before the available date? Well, in this case, um, I don't have an available date set, so it doesn't matter. But if I did, I could hide it before that. 
and let's see, do we want email alerts? Uh, depending on how you grade, email alerts can be nice because you could have them all come into one inbox and then when you feel like grading you just go look in that inbox and see what alerts you got. Alternatively you just come here and grade the assignment. Do you want to send for marking? That's a button um, in this particular assignment where the user, once they've uploaded their files, they now say, okay, I'm done, I want to submit it. And so we'll go ahead and allow that. And everything else, we have our groups and visibility defaulted, and if you had it in a certain category like assignments, you could do that. In this case, um, I could move it there, but that's just up to how you've got your gradebook organized. So we're going to save and display. Again, looks like the others. Only we have these additional areas, the submission draft area and the notes field. So we'll go and also you've got this send for marking. So I'm going to go back to the main page and you can see turn in first and second drafts and I'll show you what the student sees. We'll switch role to student and turn in first and second drafts and they have the instructions here and no file submitted and no entry. So let's go ahead and choose a couple files. I could go in and let's just turn in this one. Let's just pretend these are our essays. Whoops. Um, so I hit upload this file and now that file shows up here and pick another one and I will uh, pick that one and upload it there. So now I've got two files. I say, oops, I got the wrong one. So I can change that. Notice there's no more upload option because we said only two files. So what I can do is um, edit this and say, whoops, I uploaded the wrong file. Can you reset it for me? And we go ahead and save changes. Now in reality that would be a bad way for the student to get help because you might not see this till later. So the problem here is there's no way for them to upload a new one without knowing how to do it and the way to do it is actually just hit the X next to it. So in this case the student would be um, you know waiting for the professor to answer but we're going to go ahead and delete that one and we're going then we have the option again of choosing a new one so we choose a new one and we'll get this picture we upload it. So now we have two files again and I realize, oh well, I guess I don't need to reset. So I edit, say um, cool, neat assignment. And again, this is all the student perspective. So we save changes and now we think we've got it. We've turned in our two items. We wrote a note to the professor. We're going to send for marking. And then it says, are you sure you're, you will no longer be able to delete it or attach? We're going to say yes. And now the options to delete those pictures or edit the text are gone. And it's locked in for the instructor to see. So advanced uploading files is the most flexible and actually pretty neat. And we'll go back there. And that covers all of the assignment types.